couple more things we need to do to finish off this board. We need to now add the pots. Now I will add the pots. Okay. Really nice pots, really nice surface mound pots. Great, great pots. And add them to the back. And we're going to add the LED. And a little trick I do for the LED. If you just put the LED in the box, it just looks bad. It sticks out too much. It sets too high. I don't like that. Okay. Couple couple things you, you can do to fix this. You can put a bezel which I didn't really think went went with the uh, design. There, there's a number of ways you can fix it. Um, these uh, number 10 washers, I think. Number number 10 nylon washers. At least these particular ones. Um, I forget what the manufacturer is, but I know where I get I, I actually get them. From, did I put in a plug for cable down connectors in Newington, Connecticut yet? Boy, if there's anybody anywhere near Newington, Connecticut, and you're into electronics, you got you got to go to cables and uh, connectors. Fantastic place, just great place, great guys. Uh, I, I just love those guys. I use that. It took a little while to find just exactly the right ones to use, but can can you read that? Let's see. These are number ten by uh, Fillmore. Number ten flat uh, nylon washers. Number ten. 501. These are great. I use that, and these are King Bright LEDs, I believe. And wouldn't you know it, just absolutely perfect fit. Just absolutely perfect. And they give me just the right amount of standoff inside the box to uh, get that out at the right at the right height. It's great. Very lucky that uh, that just all happened to fit. Okay, so I'm going to install. The LED. Let's make sure I get the polarity right. Now I'm actually going to put it in the box. And I'll tell you why. These um, pots, they have loose standoffs on them that theoretically put them all at the same height above the board. And in practice I find that there's there's some amount of vari variability there. And the problem is if these aren't all dead flat across the top, right? If you just solder them on and these aren't all dead flat on on the part that hits the box, right? When you actually build the build the box and you screw these down, you will flex the board. You don't want to flex the board. That's so bad. You don't ever want to flex that board. This board needs to be without any sort of ten tension on it. And I tell you, even if the flexed board lasts, right, you're going to have disaster one day when you drop it on the floor or it takes a shot here or something Something happens to it. You're guaranteed, uh, if you do it like that, one of, the, one of these days a trace somewhere or something's going to start to break. You want this assembled with no stress. So I have a little, little test box here that I use for, not for nothing but this. I screw all of this down first. Also, it gives me a chance to get the LED to the right height on the board. And what I'm going to do first is solder the, um, I'm not actually going to solder the electronic part of the, um, of the pots now. I'm just going to solder the mounting lugs, which don't go anywhere. So I'm just going to make sure that the board is seated. It actually doesn't matter that it's seated perfect, perfectly now because... Um, because I'm soldering it in a box, no matter how the board is, if it's tilted a little, little bit, it's fine. It just needs to not be stressed when you, when you screw it down. Okay? I'm going to quickly... And now you're going to see how much, much thermal capacity this iron really has. These are some big mounting lugs. Let me, let me tell you, that's a big piece of metal. Let me show you what we're actually soldering here. These are big pieces of metal right there. See see that? That's a huge piece of metal going onto a huge pad. Okay? And I'm just going to scream through this. Are you ready? Here we go.
You're gonna see this is gonna it's gonna it's gonna look like a campfire with all the um, all the flux fumes coming off. And this is flowing to the other side just fine, I promise you. This iron has a tremendous amount of solder capa capacity. Okay. Of uh, heat of heat of heat capacity, thermal capacity. Thermal recovery is what 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 we like to call it in the, in the biz. Let's see if I can zoom you in for just one of these joints at least. You can see what it looks like. Yeah, this is a great solder solder station. Let me let me tell you. This thing is awesome. If you have the money, buy it. Yeah, you know, you know, I did I didn't even did I talk about um uh, did I talk about various solder solder stations? Let's see. Is there any way I can get on here? Yeah, I can do it like that. Watch, watch this. Heats up and just fly. I mean, I'm just dumping solder into here. And it's just dumping heat into the joint. No problem. No problem. Pleasure to use. I don't think I actually talked about what kinds of solder stations you could buy that aren't going to break the bank. Um, maybe I'll do that now while I'm just doing the LED. Again, with the LED, same as always, we're going to push down to make sure it's seated, and we'll just simply cut it. That's all. No big deal. Um, I re realize not everybody's going to be able to afford or even want to afford a JB, a JBC. Uh, my second choice, and I have plenty of Hackle products here, and I used a Hackle iron for many years. Uh, great iron, great, great iron. Easily my sec my second choice is a Hackle. Um, if you can find, and you may still be able to find to find one, a Hackle 936. That's basically that's like the standard. Um, you know, entry level iron. What a great iron. If you can find an old 936 with a dial on it, great iron. I highly rec recommend that iron. Get good tips for it, you know, get good hacko tips for it. Uh, like I said, a nice, uh, it'd be like a two and a half millimeter tip will probably do 90% of what you want to do. If uh, you're soldering to trim cloth or to the back of pots, you may want a three millimeter tip or a four millimeter tip. You know, I have, I have some larger tips here for doing like trim cloths. Um, and the hacko is what I basically use on the guitar side of my shop. That's what I use to um, do most of the wiring on guitars. Okay. Um, Great, 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 great station, the Hakko 936. Um, that's discontinued. You can get the, uh, the one that they have now that replaces it, uh, the FX 888. Again, another great station. Um, don't like it so much. You can't stack multiple stations on top of each other. Don't know why they screwed that up. Uh, because that was a great feature of the 936, is that a lot of things, so for example, this um, stacks on top of a 936, which also stacks on top of, I have an FP101, which is another discontinued station. I've had that for a good 10, 12 years. Great station. They all stack uh, really great. Why they screwed it up, I don't know. But the FX888 is a great station, too. If you can get one of those, um, you should get one of those. But again, that's discontinued. They've now switched to a digital interface, the FX888D. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. The performance is great. I don't really like the digital interface. Please, if you're going to buy that, read the instructions at least two or three times. There's only two button controls on it. It's very, very easy to get into the wrong mode and to uh, screw up the calibration on that iron. And then you're going to be looking for somebody with a way to calibrate it, or you're going to have to send it back, or you're going to have to buy calibrating equipment, which if you buy decent calibrating equipment, again, is not cheap. 
Um, so you really don't want to screw up the calibration on it. Other than that, great iron. Even even better performance than the 936, really. The FX8088 and 888D are, are, you know, they perform even better than the 936. I like the 936. I like the knob. I like, I like to be able to stack it. Um, other irons out there, uh, or solder stations out there, you're on, you're on, you're on. I mean, if you could afford a Pace, Pace makes a great station. Metcal makes a great station. Uh, if you could afford it or if you find them used, they're really great. I'm not a huge fan of Weller anymore these days. I've had some issues with their tips just disintegrating. Um, you know, they were, they were bought some, some time ago. A lot of, um, a lot of production went um, elsewhere. And um, you'll see a lot of a lot of people have complained about some of the quality. I think their quality has maybe improved a little a little bit in recent years, but there's really no reason to go there for the money. If you're going to spend money on a Weller, um, spend less, buy a Hacko, or if you're going to spend a Weller kind of kind of money, you know, consider um, if you want to spend more than a Hacko, consider something like this, like the JBC. Great if you have some cash or um, even a used JBC, although good luck finding those used, or a Pace, uh, they make, a Pace is the darling of, um, of uh, the military world, especially uh, maybe the Air Force or the Navy. They make great, great products, great products made, in, made right here in the, in the USA. Great videos online, too. If you do a search on Pace uh, videos, you'll learn more about soldering than you could ever want to know. And like I said, Metcal's great, um, lots of great state great stations out there but I like JBC I like Hacko well that's pretty much it let's take this apart let's have a look one last look at our work make sure we like everything and that is a completed horse board right there okay oh no haha <laughs> I almost I almost I almost for I almost forgot my uh, <laughs> you know I'm constantly looking and uh, inspecting when uh, I look when I look at these <laughs> I obviously forgot to solder the um, the actual electronics for the pot so let's do that let's do that real quick before we pat ourselves on the back. Again, we're not we're not gonna clean this. We're not gonna clean it anymore. We're gonna live with a little bit of flux on here, which is perfectly okay, because I normally don't clean the board anyhow. We just did that. To... So I'm not gonna make a big deal about this. We're just gonna quickly um, just do it. I'm not doing anything different than I had done before. Same exact same exact proceed procedure. There's a couple of contortions that you have to do to get to get it to get in here. So it's not a big deal. Exactly like all the other joints we make. Make the solder bridge. Make the solder bridge and feed from the back side. And always touch the pad and the um, Pin at the same time, always. You want to have good contact with everything you expect solder to stick to. Yeah, I shouldn't, I sh sh shouldn't even say that because this isn't really a sticking that we're, we're, that we're doing here. This is actually some dissolving of, of, the, of the base metals. This is, this is almost an alloying step. You know, solder is not glue. That's why people put globs and globs of solder thinking that they're going to get a stronger joint. They're not. You're, you're essentially making an alloy, you know? There, there is a metallurgical bond here. Very strong metallurgical bond if you do it right, even though the solder itself is so weak. When you do it right, that metallurgical bond is atom thick, and it's extremely strong, very strong, very reliable. The wire wrap is even more reliable, believe, believe it or not. We're going to look at it. And we examine the LED, make sure it flows through. Just check everything. Just check everything. We check the um, pin, the, the, what I just soldered to make sure it looks good from this side. 
check that it flowed through to the other side, which it did flow through beautif beautifully to the other side. Um, check the lugs that we did, you know, those mounting lugs here, those big honking pieces of metal that it actually flowed through to the other side. Now, now look at the thermal capacity on that JBC iron. Look, look how much it, it heated up and how much I was able to flow through in just seconds. You know, you try to, you try to do that with your little pencil iron, you know, forget about it. You need, and I was, you, you, I was monitoring the temp, the temperature on the station while I did that. I was, I was just, just curious. It didn't move one degree. It was absolutely rock solid. This thing can dump heat into a joint like you wouldn't believe. Fantastic uh, station. If you, if you could afford it, I highly recommend getting it. And the only, uh, I'm telling you, the only two tips you need for uh, practically a hundred percent of the work that you're going to do in anything, get a two. Like the, I think they sell their 2.4 millimeter um, chisel tip, and then get their high capacity. Maybe this is maybe three millimeter or so. That's going to do most of what you need to do. Um, that's all. That's all. That's all you need. Okay. All right. That's it. So that's the that's the completed board. Put it up here on the shelf with other completed boards. And we'll see you back in part two, where we're actually going to build the uh, box. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.